Hi everyone, I'm back again. Thanks for watching my videos. Uh, today I'll be talking about scopolamine. Scopolamine is an anticholinergic agent. I'll go over the different forms, the uses, and possible side effects. But I need to stay categorically here that I'm not an agent of any pharmaceutical company or companies that are selling or manufacturing scopolamine. I'm just presenting pieces of info about scopolamine for anyone that's on need and whoever may be prescribing it in future and for the benefits of everyone. Okay, with that, let's go. Scopolamine, most of the times, will be prescribed with generic names, scopolamine, but uh, there is a brand name, Madema. Well, uh, apologies to other companies who would have manufactured scopolamine. I'm not familiar with any of them apart from the generic name, and this only one, Madema. Scopolamine is an anticholinergic agent. It's also an anti-emetic. So we can use it for emesis, nausea, vomiting, and hypersecretion. It's also an antispasmodic agent. So when there is spasm of smooth muscles, particularly along the gastrointestinal tract, it could be used. In Parkinson, it's also a good agent as anti-Parkinson tremor. Perhaps because of its ability to relieve spasm. It is naturally occurring and is known as a tertiary amine and also antimuscarinic agent. Scopolamine could come in various forms, form of patch, by aura or injection and comes in strengths of 1.5 milligram or 1 milligram per mil or 0.4 milligram per mil also 1.3 milligram or 0.4 milligram the patch could be as 1.5 milligram at the back of ELS here at the back of the ear but there should be no air there it could be applied at the evening before surgery and until 24 hours post-operative time. Could be given intravenously or intramuscularly as 0.3 milligram to 0.65 milligram every six to eight hours as may be required. Use this. We use scopolamine to prevent nausea and vomiting, and also emotion sickness or death rattle at the end of life. Also, scopolamine could be used to prevent nausea and vomiting induced by anesthesia, and also because of possibility of muscle spasm, it could be used to control smooth muscle spasm along the gastrointestinal tract. It's useful in Parkinson's disease to suppress the tremor, and also in Parkinson-like conditions. It is an anticholinergic agent like I have earlier alluded to. Still part of uses, when we are trying to use scopolamine to undo Parkinson tremor, you can use 0.4 milligram to 0.8 milligram per hour every eight hours PRN, that is as it may be required or when required. For motion sickness, someone traveling and will always throw off or have nausea while on the trip, you can apply the patch, one patch behind the LS here, four hours before taking off. 
and you replace after a total of 72 hours. No matter how long your trip is, I guess you must have arrived at where you're going that time. But if it's going to take you more than three days on the road, maybe you are going by cruise, then you have to have many, many samples with you. So every 72 hours you change. But before 72 hours, you may remove the patch if you are having the following symptoms. If you start feeling pain in your eyes, or someone tells you that you have redness, that's a cooler redness, maybe through the mirror you see yourself, or your spouse, your friend, your family members, anyone tells you, oh, what comes about your eyes, they are red, okay? Or you have blood vision, or you can't urinate, or your heart is beating fast, or you are falling, you are fainting, then those are possible anticholinergic side effects. Even before 72 hours, please pull it off, remove it. And to everyone who will be handling scopolamine, particularly the nurses, you are not using it, but you are applying it on someone else. Please wash your hands thoroughly after administering scopolamine of any form, particularly the patch. What are the possible side effects? A whole lot of them. Anticholinergic effects will lead to loss of vision or blood vision. There's possibility of decreased level of consciousness and increased urinary retention with possibility of decreased urinary output, oliguria. There's possibility of dry mouth, aloes around lice, heart raising, fullness of the ear, and pounding in the ears. There's that possibility of scissors, tunnel vision, drowsiness, hypotension, myocardial infarction, and even possibly cardiac arrest. The list still goes on to include migraine attacks could be worsened with anyone with positive family history. So this is going to be helpful. When you take the history, you need to find out if this person is a known individual who has been diagnosed with migraine headache in the past? If the answer is yes, no scopolamine. Okay, this is not an individual who has been diagnosed with migraine headache, but there's positive family history of migraine. Then, no scopolamine. There's possibility of memory impairment. Let go. Glaucoma. Dysuria. Agitation and possibly hallucination and confusion. So this may or not be associated with psychosis. There's possibility of acute psychosis. In other words, anyone with psychiatry diagnosis or history of glaucoma or vitigo should not use copolamine because that is going to worsen the situation because part of the side effects will be all this. Stephen Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis are a form of severe anaphylaxis due to reaction to scopolamine. So anyone with a sensitivity to scopolamine should not use it. And it's even possible that someone using scopolamine for the first time could come down with severe sensitivity like Stephen Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis. So what we do is we watch out for any anaphylaxis close to that. That's possibility of pharyngitis. And with that, I've come to the end of this short presentation about scopolamine. Please kindly subscribe to my channel. And once I have my presentation published, you'll be able to have a copy immediately. 
appreciate that.